Hello and welcome back to the Team City Kotlin DSL series. In this episode, you're going to learn how to get really comfortable with the Kotlin DSL, basically configuring your projects like you were in the UI. Let's give it a go. So you're back in the Kotlin script file from last episode, and you might be thinking, well, it's Kotlin, statically typed, so I'm just gonna ask IntelliJ what kind of autocomplete options it gives me. So for example, on the build type, you can see there's like a pause flag, templates, create method, artifact rules, a ton of different stuff I could configure. And then I could go to my VCS settings and I would see like I can specify a branch filter, a checkout directory, checkout mode and whatnot. Going down to the Maven build step, I can see I can even choose like a Docker image, Docker pull, Docker run parameters, image platform, all sorts of options. Now, the thing is, it's a bit overwhelming at the beginning to know what option corresponds to what UI feature in TeamCity, what options could you set, should you set, what option makes sense. But if you're not, there's actually a very easy way to ease you into writing your Kotlin code, and it starts with the UI. So for the moment being, go back to the UI, and then in your A new to-do list project, for example, open up your build configuration containing the Maven build step. More specifically, open up the Maven build step, right? And as you can see, you have a ton of options here in the UI. You could specify a custom step name, for example, custom step name, right? That is going to be displayed instead of just displaying Maven up here different goals, reference pomxml file, set a specific Maven version. Let's say I want to pick 3.5.4 here. Maybe also pick a specific JDK version. And here, down here I have my Docker container options and whatnot. Now the question is, what would that li look like in Kotlin code? And for that, do not click the save button down here, even though you're prompted to do it, the changes are not yet saved. Rather scroll up again, and on the left, you'll find a button which is called View DSL. And if you click that button, you'll see basically your settings KTS file with a highlighted section, the one from a Maven build step, Maven, with all the options set in Kotlin DSL. And you can simply choose to copy that or even hit the button up here, copy to clipboard, go back to your IDE, and then just replace this block here and this is exactly the UI options now in your Kotlin code, just to get used to what options you could set and what makes sense. Now, for now, I'm just gonna remove actually the Maven version. See, I'm just gonna keep my custom step name to show you what, what's happening now once I commit these changes. So I'm just gonna commit and push to my repository. How does Team City detect these changes, work with them, and what happens next? So now you can see I pushed one commit. I'm going back to Team City and just quickly back to my project actually, to version settings. And it's always good to know that down here on the version settings page, I always see the current status. I see what Team City is doing, when it detected latest changes, what it did with these changes. Basically, everything that's happening you can see here under current status. And by default, as we're using the same VCS route as our project, TeamCity is polling the repository every 60 seconds for changes. And you can also circumvent that by hitting low project settings from VCS, simply loading them manually. And you can see that TeamCity is now fetching the configurations from the latest revision. And it's gonna take a second, and then TeamCity is running the DSL which takes a couple of more seconds to complete. And then when you go back to your general settings page where you see the build configurations, now you can still see that the build step is called Maven that I have here, my build configuration. And if I refresh again a couple of seconds later, you can see now that the build step is called my custom step name. And you might choose to give it a more sensible name here, right? But that showed you how TeamCity picks up the changes automatically. And now we're gonna continue with playing a bit with the UI. We're inside the build configuration and we just changed like the build step Maven settings. And as you can see, I always have that view DSL button here available. 
So I could go to my version control settings, I could click view DSL here, and then Team City would highlight the VCS route, right? So very simple, the, sim the same stuff as on the Maven page. I can go to triggers, for example, and then maybe even edit a trigger. Say, I'm just gonna choose some random options here, trigger a build on each check-in, for example, just setting a couple of checkboxes, ticking a couple of checkboxes, setting a quiet period of 30 seconds. And now in these dialog windows, what you'll find is that there's also a view DSL button down in the lower right corner. Again, you can just copy that. Instead of having to hit save now, you just edit in the UI. You do not save, you simply copy all the Kotlin settings from up here to your clipboard and hit cancel again, right? Again, you could go back and then paste them in here. Now the question is, where would you actually paste these v VCS settings? Would they go up here or would they rather go down here? And it's always important to know that in the UI, you were just under the trigger section. You specify the VCS trigger, so that code doesn't have to go in here. It also doesn't have to go up here. What that, where that code has to go is, it has to go inside the triggers section, basically. And then you need to make sure to get the right import. The Kotlin DSL is structured, or basically is rather versioned in multiple versions. And what you can see here is, by looking closely, here you'll find in the package name version 2019 underscore two, which is the latest version, right? Version 10, these are basically older versions, so I'll just go with 2019 two, right? And then you'll see that the code compiles exactly what you wanted. And last but not least, let's have a look at, for example, build features. The same, you hit add build feature. Again, you do not choose just a build feature like free disk space and hit save. Rather, you configure your build feature like let's say six gigabytes of required free space and fail the build. If there's insufficient disk space, click view DSL. Again, just copy the whole block to the clipboard. Note you're under the build feature section with a free disk space, right? Which means in here, you'll need to have the features block and paste your free disk space block inside, like so. Now, what I recommend you do is play with your own Team City project in the UI and simply have a look at what the Kotlin DSL, the corresponding Kotlin DSL for your UI configurations would look like. It's the easiest way to get started with the Kotlin DSL because you're not just gonna write some Kotlin code, you have to understand what are features, what are triggers, what would I want to set, and always see it in the UI and paste it back into your Kotlin code. After a while, you'll feel confident enough to skip the UI section and just go with Kotlin code. But for now, for the beginning, get started with the View DSL button. All right, you learned a lot in this episode. And in the next episode, we're gonna have a look at what happens if you make changes to your Kotlin, to your settings Kotlin file and push it to your repository, but at the same time, make and save changes in the Team City UI. Let's check it out.